It's Friday, February 11th, and time for your Barbados Today Morning News update. An internationally renowned epidemiologist is of the view that children in Barbados should be allowed to resume school. Dr. Paul Alexander, a former COVID pandemic evidence in physics advisor to the World Health Organization and the Pan American Health Organization, maintained that the science shows that children do not transmit COVID-19 to other children or adults. He made the comments on Thursday during a webinar entitled, Considering Current Global Pandemic Threats, Are COVID-19 Vaccines Necessary for Children and the Wider Barbadian Population? The data for 22 months show us children do not spread this virus. We have the data published in BMJ, published all over the world. Children, I want to say it again. Children do not spread this virus to children. Children do not spread it to adults. Children do not take it home, unlike seasonal influenza, where children drive it home. Children do not get severely ill. We have found in the studies that show us that the spread is often principally top-down, adult to, to, to child. Home clusters, not initiated. A child is never the index case. The school is the safest place for the child. For anyone, the school is the safest place for the teacher. The school. The Alliance Owners of Public Transport says it may have to readjust safety systems to facilitate the hundreds of children expected to return to the physical classroom on February 21st for face-to-face -face learning. And AOPT Chairman Roy Raphael is disappointed that his association and others that represent public service vehicles were not included in consultations for the planned return to school. As such, AOPT, which represents a segment of owners and operators of public service vehicles, as well as taxis, maxi-taxis, and hired car providers, is requesting an urgent meeting with the Minister of Transport and Work, Santia Bradshaw, and Education Minister, Kim McConney. He tells Barbados today such discussions would allow the representative PSV bodies to see how best they could facilitate the number of school children that would be back out to school. The Salvation Army's 2021 Christmas Appeal has raised just over $817,000, surpassing the $700,000 target. Word of this from Chairman of the Army's Advisory Board, Paul Bernstein, who thanked the general public and the business community for their support. Speaking during a press conference on Thursday, Bernstein also revealed that the number of Barbadians requesting assistance from the Army continues to increase, particularly due to the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2021, we were able to help the following people. With clothing and furniture, we've helped 752 persons for, with furniture and clothing. In food hampers, this is not the Christmas hamper, food hampers for people that needed, required food, especially during COVID, people that came in with f children and, and, and had no, no meals to get or anything like this, we were happy to say that we gave out 4,987 food hampers. On top of that, the, the regular Christmas hampers, uh, we gave out across Barbados, 4,002 persons received hampers. So all in all, it's nearly, it's just over 9,000, just about 9,000 people receiving hampers by way of during the year and by the Christmas hampers. The feeding center prepared hot meals and indoor meals, when I say indoor, we have changed our system where people come and collect it and leave. In, in. <clears throat> they received 26,480 persons received meals. And on wheels, which is for shut-ins, we sent out 10,653. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. 
I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from the region, the Guyana government is examining ways to slow down the migration of qualified nurses from the country. More from News Source Guyana. Appearing before the Parliamentary Committee of Supply this morning, Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony revealed that there is active recruitment of Guyanese nurses from foreign countries, particularly the United Kingdom. He said while the problem has persisted for several years, the recruitment is hurting the local healthcare system as nurses leave to seek better pay and an improved way of life. The minister said the government of Guyana plans to find ways to slow down the exodus of nurses. There are active recruitment of nurses from Guyana and we have been losing nurses because of this um, active recruitment. So we are looking at various ways that we can uh, slow that down. Um, I don't think we might be able to ever stop it, but we at least have to slow it down and then be able to produce uh, more nurses for the facilities and so forth. Minister Anthony said there are a number of measures, including training more nurses and the need to address the bigger problem of retention that will have to be addressed. And that is to compete with the salaries that are being paid in the UK. Uh, that's a, a very tall order. And what is happening right now is that when a nurse is offered a job, let's say in the UK, that offer is not just for the nurse to go to the UK, but for the entire family to accompany the nurse. And so these, these are the dynamics that we have. Dr. Anthony, however, admitted that in order for nurses to be assured of upward mobility in Guyana, they must first complete the midwifery program, even if they have no interest in that field. He said that it is a situation that the government will be looking to change. Finally, on the international front, the shutdown of a vital trade route between Canada and the United States by truckers protesting vaccine mandates has forced auto plants on both sides of the border to shut down or scale back production. More from CBS News. The trucker blockade in Canada is growing with vaccine mandate protests closing border crossings in three provinces, bordering Michigan, North Dakota and Montana. In Detroit, the Ambassador Bridge remains closed for a fourth day, cutting off about 25 percent of all trade between the two countries. Michigan's governor demanded the Canadian government open the bridge. They got to clear the path so that commerce can flow or a lot of people are going to be unemployed. GM, Ford and Toyota are among several automakers forced to cut production at several plants in the U.S. and Canada as far away as Kentucky due to a lack of parts. At MBH Trucking outside Lansing, these trailers are parked instead of making their cross-border runs. No, Owner Brian Hitchcock, what portion of, the, of your business is across Canada? Cross border about 40 percent of our revenue so we go in and out of there every week 40 percent is a big hit yes it is the cross canada protest started nearly two weeks ago in ottawa authorities have still not been able to get the trucks off the streets this can go on for days weeks months it doesn't matter and if it's not here it's going to be somewhere else police are now asking for help clearing out the protesters more reinforcements means more results a speedier, safer, more lawful end to this unlawful and unsafe demonstration. There are new concerns a similar trucker convoy could start this weekend at the Super Bowl. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.